everyone and um, welcome to today's webinar, Leverage Mobile App Tests for API um, Tests. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Yi Min. Yi Min is an EMEA-based senior solution engineer working for Source Labs. He has been in the IT industry for 10 years and is in various different roles, including as being a software engineer, QA engineer, IT consultant and less technical roles like Scrum Master, among others. As a senior solution engineer, Yimin helps customers with their testing journey by advising and developing solutions for each and everyone's unique requirements and tech stack. He is comfortable in facilitating communication and collaboration between business and IT teams and presenting in front of business leaders. When not working, Yimin can be found playing badminton, mountain biking, playing computer games or tinkering with home automation. So without further ado, I'll turn this over to Yimin. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot, Eddie. Welcome to this uh, webinar. Let's start by going through the agenda for the next uh, 55 minutes or so. Um, a quick introduction, um, but more or less about myself, but also about this topic, um, especially the topics we are going to talk about, um, which are mostly going to be the mobile tests using Arpium on Source Labs which is going to be the foundation for the main topic of today, which is API tests using SourceLab's own uh, API testing solution. And lastly, of course, we're going to take a look at questions, if you have any. Uh, some of you already um, pre-submitted some questions ahead of time. Thanks a lot for that. I took a look and we will um, cover them for sure. But um, as Maddie said, if you have any questions, please do let us know. Um, and don't worry if the question might get answered during the webinar or not, um, it doesn't matter. Now, again, um, this is myself. Um, basically, the four bullet points about um, Maddie already talked about. So we are not going to spend more time on this, but rather talk about who this talk is for. So what is or who are the the primary, let's say, the audience. What is the primary primary audience for this um, webinar? And I hope you will find yourself somewhere here on this um, screen. But if you do not, um, please stay on. <laughs> uh, I think um, it will still be an interesting you know, um, talk for everyone who is doing something in you know mobile space. It might be development, it might be QA, but it might also be um, just API. So there's something for everyone in here. But the topics we're going to talk about are relevant for front-end developers. So people who create websites, um, but also create maybe apps. We are going to talk about software um, development engineers and tests. So QA people who write test automation, it might be with Sosla, uh, Selenium, Arpium, or any other testing framework. We're of course going to talk also about, um, you know, mobile app developer and how, for example, they can leverage what I'm going to show you in the next 15 minutes by now. Overall, of course, there's also something in for QA managers and of course, manual testers. Now, what is the learning or what are the learnings um, in this webinar? So what will you get out of um, this one hour webinar? Um, what can you take back to your teams, to your friends, to your companies as um, you know, knowledge? First of all, a bit more about Source Labs. So you will learn a bit about what we have, what we can do, um, where our journey is going to be. But we'll also actually mostly talk about the uh, bullet points highlighted in red and in bold, which is network traffic capture. So um, HRR or HAR file. We're going to talk then about the creation of tests, of API tests, how we can do API monitoring. And lastly, of course, how we can do load testing. The other bullet points are things we have and can do in soft apps which is just out of scope for this webinar, but I will have a um, collection of links for you in the end, which you can um, visit to learn more about things like device vitals, interactions, audio capture, 
um, inspect view trees um, for real devices and for the API parts, things I'm not going to talk about are API mocking and API contract testing. All right, now without further ado, let's talk first about mobile app tests using Appium um, for the simple reason, so we can generate some network files for our purposes here. Now, this is the uh, source lab UI after login. Let me make this a bit bigger. So um, nothing too spectacular for now, but we are going to go here, take a look at mobile apps, and you can see I have uploaded our source labs demo app here in two flavors. Two of them are in uh, uh, iOS, right? The last one in Android. Now, let's first of all things check the settings. And the important thing here is for you, um, if you want to leverage this functionality, which all of you are welcome to do by either signing up on Source Labs with a self trial account, um, or if you're already a customer, you can already do this as well. You basically need to enable instrumentation and at least uh, network capture. Oops. Yeah, this is the only thing you need to do. Um, you can, of course, do this kind of thing also. Sorry, Yimin, I don't think we can see the um, screen. Oh, you can't? Oh, okay. Sorry, we can just see mobile app testing right. using it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm, okay, we're just going to switch to it. No? There we go. Yeah, you can okay. see it now. Sorry about, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, thanks, Maddie. <laughs> okay, let's uh, just go one minute into the past. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the Source Labs UI. Um, I zoomed into a tiny bit uh, using the browser settings, make it bit bigger and um, going here to mobile app. I've uploaded, as I said, the three apps here they are. Um, just clicking here on settings. And here it's important that you enable instrumentation and network capture, but you can also of course do programmatically when you initiate a driver. Now that we have done this, we can um, select one of these uploaded apps. They're all the same anyway, in my case. Click on choose device and we can already see here we are getting only android based phones at the moment we have 156 device configurations so this is not the amount of phones um, in total but rather the different flavors or kinds or configurations of, of phones we have that means a Google Pixel 6 here, for example, with Android 12 is one configuration. This Amazon Fire HD 10 2019 with Android 9 is another configuration. So we have basically 156 different kinds of phones, which when leveraged should give you a high amount of device coverage for running your tests on, meaning um, it's super easy for you to cover and make sure that your application, whatever kind of application it might be, either mobile or a mobile browser type of application is working on all different kinds of phones because your users are most likely to use a different phone than, you know, compared to each other. Now, for comparison's sake, let's go back, um, yep, again, back here. Um, use an iOS one, and we will see for iOS, we have 77. Now, what, the reason for you know having less phones in iOS is because the ecosystem of Apple is less fragmented than Android. So this gives us a tiny bit of less um, configurations to deal with. Nevertheless, we have 77 here at the moment, and if we total up um, or add up both values with over 200 different um, configurations you can test source labs again here the same thing applies one model iphone 13 pro max for example and ios 15.7 smart configuration and we have 77 of yeah different configurations to test on 
Now, um, we can, of course, test here as well on different browsers, on a mobile browser for these devices. And we can see here the total number actually um, is 290 um, if we add up the Android as well as the iOS ones. But for now, let's do a quick manual test. What I wish um, was also going to be the basis basically later on for our half file. I've enabled, let's just double check for a second, the instrumentation, a network capture, and something else more, but it doesn't matter. Click on choose, choose device. Um, let's take the Google Pixel 6. This is a real device. Um, I'm working in the EU data center. I'm based out of Germany, which is why I'm connecting to an EU device here. This is a real device in our data center in Berlin, which means um, we are now basically installing this app on a real device somewhere in a data center where it's probably, um, okay, not too dark, but you know, loud at least. Um, after the installation is done on this device, which is now, we can interact with this device the same way we do with a phone in our hands. That means I can use my mouse to swipe up and down. I can, of course, click on things. And what we're going to do here in this demo app, which all of you are free to download or to look at the source code on GitHub, if you wish, is click here on API calls. And this app is now doing some API calls in the background. We can click around here, there we go. Oh, there was something. Go clicking around as you can see. Um, this might already be considered, you know, a buggy. It's slow, but anyway, the idea here is I'm doing some API calls in the background. There we go. Some devices are loaded, and that's it. We'll leave that for now. Now, going back here, we are going to take a look at what I did. We have here interactions. This means what I clicked on um, in this way. Okay, what I tapped on um, while I did this manual testing session. We have inspect, literally um, going through the different, you know, view tree of um, the phone. We have device vitals. Oops. There we go. So the performance, the hardware of the device while I was interacting with it. And lastly, the thing everyone here is looking forward to, network capture. So with this demo API call we did, this is the stuff we captured. So a bunch of get calls, um, get requests to be more specific, which return 200. Um, some of them, you know, of type JSON and so on and so forth. Now, we are now going to do the same thing in automation, just for completeness sake. So I've created this simple um, Arpium test based on the latest Arpium Java client, which is 8.2, um, which all of you should update to anyway, if you're doing uh, Arpium stuff. And by the way, Selenium has also recently um, a new release of the uh, Selenium um, client. It's now 4.6. You should also update the latest version if you haven't already. Now, what is this test doing? It essentially is doing more or less the same thing I just did now, which is um, to use the app, which is this one, Android My Demo App um, React Native APK. This is the file name of the application when uploaded to Source Labs. I'm going to give my test um, a name and so we can identify it easier. I'm connecting to it using source labs URL, um, creating a driver, giving it the capabilities above here, meaning like what kind of device version and so on do I want. And here is just some simple clicking around uh, using accessibility ID and um, X path. And then some sleeps in between, of course, for the API to load. And that's it. So pretty straightforward. Um, no, nothing special here. Um, pretty much as plain Arpium as possible.
Now, let's go back here, take a look, go to test results. There we go. This is my test I just ran. As we can see, one minute ago, perfect. We open it and we already see something we are familiar with. Again, we have here some device vitals. We have here a video of the um, application. There we go. And of course, we have here the network file. Now, we can download this um, half file easily here by, go, by switching to the drop-down menu for it. We can view it, of course, here in Source Labs. We can, but of course, also download the file and inspect it in some other um, half file reader. So that is basically the way how you can make sure that you will um, have a half file when testing on source labs. Now, what did we talk about here? You need to enable network capture and the app settings or as part of your capabilities when you initiate a driver. If you're not seeing a half file, then you of course need to uh, ensure that your application is actually doing an API call. Meaning you might need to interact with the app. You might need to, um, as I did, click on something where you know an API call, API request is done. Otherwise, there's nothing for us to capture. Um, not every API, network API is supported, given the fact that uh, Android, for example, is quite, uh, let's say, open for these type of things. There are different ways to do API calls, meaning you need to make sure that the one you are using that is used in your app is um, something supported. And lastly, we talked about um, how you can, of course, view and download the half file. All right, now let's come to the main topic of today or the focus of today, API tests. Now, we have created the foundation, the basis. We have a half file here, and now we are going to click here on API testing on the left side of the menu, which will take us to the screen. We are going to create a new project for now. Let's call it webinar, click on save, that's it. Now, there are different ways to work with Source Labs API testing. You can, of course, use the HTTP client to make requests. You can import open API or Postman collections. So you do not have to redo all your work. Of course, you can also upload pre-existing API tests, maybe from a colleague, maybe from another time. But um, what we are going to do is um, go here to the HTTP client for now. And as you can see here, you could type in a simple get request, send it, then you get a response. But that is too boring. We are going to click here on the import part. And what we are importing is the half file from an RDC job. RDC here stands for Real Device Cloud, which is where we ran our um, both of our tests beforehand. So open it up. We can see here, this is the manual testing of the application I, ju uh, I just did on a Google Pixel 6. And I can also, of course, switch this view to automated. So I will see all the automated um, tests here with half files. In this case, this one is, of course, the latest. So let's import this one. Click on import. We are just putting it into this root folder called webinar. Not bothered here to create more you know, um, folders. You can, of course, if you want to. Now, this is a, one of the cards that the application did. It's a simple init. So as you can see, it just returns a status. OK, we can run it as many times as we like. Not that there's much, uh, much change expected. We have this other endpoint. 
which is just giving you back all the um, devices available in our, in this case, US West one data center. Let's um, change this easily to, oops, to our Berlin-based data center. First of all, this is uh, faster <laughs> because you don't have to travel across the, uh, the pond or the ocean. And yeah, as you can see, um, one second it took for us to get back uh, a JSON response. Well, technically it's a JSON array, um, which has JSON objects, but never mind the technicalities here. What we're now going to do is we have a test or we have a quest we did with a response. Now, how can we now basically quickly start by having some API testing without doing a lot more work. That is, of course, by clicking on generate tests, we will say, or we will call it, name it webinar test one. Move the mouse, click on create test. There we go. Now, based on the response we saw on the right side, Source Labs API testing has automatically generated the assertions based on every single field in the response. So, first of all, we have here AEQ that stands for assert equals and just means we're asserting that the content type here is equal to application slash JSON. The next assertion is that the payload is an array. As I said, it's a JSON array. And now we are randomly picking five objects, elements in that array. And each element must be or must have, in this case, um, an ABI type. The API level must be an integer. CPU cores must be an integer, and so on and so forth. So for every single field, we are now validating that actually the, um, the data is there, that the, it's the correct type. And it goes down and down and down and so on and so forth. And now we could also, of course, add more assertions by clicking here on add child component. So here we have different other components available to us to modify this test, make more assertions. And um, if you look at it more closely, this really resembles a bit like programming. Meaning if you are a developer, if you're familiar with software development, you will find this really um, well familiar. Um, so if we scroll down a tiny bit more, you can of course here add more quests. So you can chain together different API calls in one single test. But for now, let's say I am happy. We are going to run this test again. Um, you can see here on the right side, it was successful. Let's have a look quickly how this looks like. Now, this is one single test run against our EU central one region. Uh, sorry, from our EU central one region, same region where this API lives and so on and so forth, making means that it's super fast. So 90 milliseconds of latency. And you can see here, everything is um, passing. So every assertion here is great and working. So no action from our side required. Now, we're now happy with this test. Let's assume that for a second and click on publish. There we go. This test is now published, meaning it's um, saved and active, active. Active for us to do more things with it. If someone else comes now in and makes changes to this test without publishing, that's totally fine. That won't interfere with what we are now going to do. And that is to quickly create a schedule. Now, we have this API test. Of course, now we want to make sure that this API is monitored and up and running because this is, as you could see, a production API. It is publicly available. I could access it now from the internet, um, from my place at home. And we want to make sure this API is up and running. So I can easily create a scheduler. We will name it webinar scheduler. We're not going to give it a description. We have one test. This is here already pre-selected. Um, and then what we're going to do, because I'm in the Berlin time zone, 
um, I just want it to run every five minutes, essentially. I can configure it here to run um, at, you know, top of the hour, five minutes past, and so on and so forth. But now I'm happy with it running every five minutes, every hour, every day, every month. Essentially, this API call test is now executed every five minutes. That's it. I now have an API functional test I repurposed to do API monitoring. And if this test is changed, my scheduler will automatically pick up the update and um, continue to run without me having to go into here, the scheduler, or, and make changes. All right. Now, this was the fun part, um, or the easy part. Considering the upcoming holidays and all of that, um, companies should look into ways to um, test the APIs on the load. That means we have an existing test, which is this one here. It has all the assertions. It has all the important um, validations I need to do. And it is doing a bit more than traditional API tests, which means it's not just checking that an endpoint is returning a successful HTTP return code, in this case a 200, but rather it's going to the next step. It's validating that the data is correct and we want to take it to an even further next step. And that is to use the same exact functional test and apply it um, for our load testing. So we have now one test. We can click here on uh, load testing. I then need to uh, click here on create load test. I obviously don't have an agent, so one second. There we go. Here we have my terminal. And how does Source Labs API load testing actually work? Now, to make it work, you essentially need this one single line of command. It will pull in a Docker image from Docker Hub, um, which is everything you need to do to have API testing up and running. What this does is when I execute this command is it creates basically an agent on my, my system, in this case, on my own computer at home. You can, of course, because this is uh, Docker, run this from any kind of server you like. You can run five, 10, hundreds of these agents. And this one is now up and running. So when we go back here, we can see we have this agent now added um, or available for us for testing. Uh, we leave this test name as it is, doesn't really matter. We say, okay, let's take a ramp up time of um, yeah, 60 seconds from, and um, let's just say one second ramp up time. We're not going to run this test for 10 minutes. That's a bit too much. Let's just do two minutes. Or well, let's say three minutes, so cooler. Now, we can run this against different environments. I have not set up an environment here, but what you could do is set up your API tests, the same one, the same functional one you created once, and run it against different environments. Your production environment, your staging environment, your development environment, your AT environment, it doesn't really matter. In this case, we do not have that, so we leave it as it is. And now we can here configure the intensity of our load tests. We can have it in basically completely intense. We leave it as it is. But you can also say, okay, um, let's start low. We go a bit higher. We lower the intensity a bit. And then we go back up again. It doesn't really matter. You can play around with this as much as you like. This one agent can, um, of course, emulate multiple users. In our case, we just take five. It's okay. And then uh, we can save this test for now and then run it. Easy as that. 
now this test is you now starting, as I said, with five users, one agent. And there's a, a bit of ramp up time. There's a bit of, um, you know, using the um, API. And when we go back here, you can see already this one um, agent is now doing requests against our API endpoint. And this is really, really simple and really um, not really considered load at all. Now, I have already 15 um, requests in here, as we can see. I just now need to wait for this uh, for the test to finish. And then we will have some nicer looks here in the, in the different graphs. Okay, they're still running. It doesn't really matter. We'll continue from here. Now, a couple of metrics are captured. Most important one for us at this moment is 200. Um, status code was returned 55 times, which is the equal of 55 requests we have in total, which is for now good because that means all of our requests were successful so far. We have some uh, response times for this API. And um, this is, first of all, really great for you to get a first overlook or uh, overview about how your API um, is performing in general. By the way, kudos to that person who has counted how often I have said that API <laughs> in the last uh, I don't know, half an hour. But yeah, um, now. We ran the test three times, or oh, sorry, in a span of three minutes, we changed the intensity. And as you can see here, this also has an effect on these curves and how they are rendered dynamically based on our requests. No failures, everything great here. And um, status code, again, all good. Always a 200. Um, the amount of calls differs by the time and by how many call, uh, how many calls we did. Anyway, I'm not going to wait for this whole thing here now to finish. Um, you will, you already have an idea of how this looks like. Essentially, when we go back here, what we have done now is um, we have easily created an API load test without much further setup or knowledge required. It is simple to do using Docker container and um, can be easily scaled up and maintained by um, most organizations. Meanwhile, some time has um, you know, happened since I did the monitoring test. And here we go. Here is the first automated API monitored uh, test, which was from 11.35, so two minutes ago. It was successful. And we could now go into this dashboard further to look into the different metrics um, and explore a bit more. But we can also, of course, look at our load test here. Go back here and we can see, of course, now that it has uh, completed, we can see the different um, curves and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, changing now. This was a short exploration, um, short stint into API load testing, part of the API solution from Source Labs. Now, what did we talk about in the last uh, minute? We talked about how easy it is to create functional API tests in Source Labs. You can use an HTTP client to create every single request manually. You can import a Postman collection. You can import a spec file, meaning it could be an open API file. It could be a spec file imported. And we will create the different API requests for you. So you do not have to type this in manually. Based on that, based on the response, we are creating assertions 
for every single field in your um, API response. This functional test can be used for API monitoring. It can be used lastly also for API load testing to make sure that your API is working under load and not just that the API is returning a successful response, but that the, um, that the data and the content in the response is actually correct. Having said that, there are things we did not talk about. Um, oh, oops, I don't have a slide for that. But um, things, as I said in the beginning, which we did not talk about, uh, let's just go back quickly. For you to um, explore a tiny bit more after this webinar, you can sign up on Source Labs, create an account on your own, and all the things I just showed you are available for you to test on. If you are already an existing customer of Source Labs in any capacity, you are also, of course, um, uh, welcome to to any of these uh, API test thingy I just talked about. So they are not um, behind in different uh, license, subscription, or anything like that. You can now already start and use it. Things we did not talk about, um, again, API mocking. For those of you who do not know what API mocking is, API mocking is to take a specification file, a spec file, which defines all the APIs, the possible responses, and the data it should return, and then mock it. Meaning, you will have a local server running, which is based on Docker. So what you just saw me earlier by, um, uh, yeah. Let me just stop this. So you basically have one line of command. This is one single terminal command. And you have the same thing to set up a mocking server on your own local machine. And then you can run all kinds of tests against an API endpoint, which is not implemented yet, which is a great thing if your teams, usually a different team, is already starting and creating um, APIs. They're implementing it in the backend. It's just not available for testing. So you use an API mocking server locally or host it somewhere else to already get started with testing um, against these APIs. This mock server will return fixed data for the uh, endpoints when they are um, queried. Contract testing, um, again, is a way for you to verify that the contract between the minimum contract between a client and a server is um, followed based on a contract, which is um, something you can also, of course, include into the uh, assertion part when you create a functional test, the functional API test. Lastly, um, as I said, we didn't touch much on the topic of device vitals. This is just capturing the um, hardware vitals of a device. When used, interactions means what kind of thing you did on the device. So it's easy for developers to reproduce issues because they can exactly see what you did on the device. Audio capture, as the name applies, there's audio playback when using um, the phones. And lastly, inspect view tree. You can inspect the elements used um, or on the device. Oops. So having said that, um, we have around yeah, 17, 15 minutes, something remaining. Questions, remarks. Thank you so much, Yumin. So yes, as um, on the screen, if anyone would like to submit any questions, um, please submit them in the question pane um, now. Um, as for some questions that were sent in before the webinar, I will just quickly run through them. So, Yimin, how do you verify, verify API responses? Do you use JSON schema validator or something similar? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, tiny bit covered already here, but nevertheless, let's go dive into that question a bit 
because I think it's important. Um, we validate by having these assertions here. So when I go down here, again, we can, we can see, uh, let's mm, we'll do this like this. So cool. So there are different kinds of assertions available here, including JSON schema, which you also basically use to do the contract testing. So you validate that the minimum type of, well, JSON is, um, is there and valid. Yeah. So yes, you can use um, JSON schema as well as the other assertions available here to check for uh, the types of the fields which are returned by the JSON. But you can also, of course, uh, validate based on the values. So if there's, for example, a fixed um, value, your API should um, always respond back with. For example, when we go back here, click on create test, use the HTTP client, go here, click on send. We have here, um, okay, you could also verify, of course, literally on this value. Yeah. I hope that answered the question. If not, please. Um, yeah. Great. Um, another question that was sent in earlier. Um, can API tests be integrated into a, C a CI CD pipeline? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, and actually what we want to go with, because everything I just did now is more or less manually, right? You set it up once, but our goal should be, um, of course, to automate as much as possible. A CI CD server slash pipeline is um, the right way to do that. So everything I just showed you here, um, can be done over API calls as well. So you can you, technically, you can use the APIs available in, in Source Labs API testing to run these tests. Meaning as part of the CI CD pipeline where you run, for example, automated um, Arpium or Selenium tests, you can in the next step trigger these tests you have here in API testing and um, make it part of your ICD pipeline, meaning that your pipeline will, for example, stop if these tests are also failing, or um, if you prefer to you know, um, manually trigger these tests and not based on a scheduler like we have here, you want to have, let's say, the trigger being on your side, you can integrate all of this stuff into your existing CICD pipeline. By the way, the CI/CD server does not matter. Um, I get asked this question um, quite often. It doesn't matter to, in general, to Source Labs, what kind of CI/CD server you use. It can be any kind. It can be Jenkins. It can be GitHub, um, GitHub Actions, GitHub Workflows. It can be GitLab. It can be um, Azure. It can be whatever. It doesn't matter to us. Great, thank you so much. And a question that was sent in via the chat. Um, it says, um, how can we see our Appium command in Source Lab results? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's go back to Source Labs. Um, let's go back to this test here. The Appium commands you sent um, are basically web requests. So every Appium um, step you have in your test, like click on something, send keys, send the text basically is one web request. And this is represented here on the left side under the commands tab. So for example, the first one here is what I'm looking for. In my Appium test, I'm looking for this menu icon, these three, this, um, this burger icon, it's, it's called uh, on Android at least. And as you can see here, it is doing basically a post element trying to find um, the menu icon, which has the value open menu behind it. It's trying to use it with accessibility ID. And that is essentially your RPM command. Your RPM command is this one here with these parameters and the response um, the RPM server is, hey, 
element um, with this name, uh, sorry, with this web name here, and so on and so forth, is found. Yeah, and you can go through this list here, or if you want it in a more, let's say, um, downloadable way, we can click here on logs on the right side, click on this drop down menu, and then you will have um, commands JSON, which is, well, all the single Appium commands basically here. But you can, of course, also go to rpm.log, which is the rpm server log, which also has all your rpm commands. Um, as you can see, it's a bit chatty, but you will also have every single rpm command you did um, here. So for example, there we go. This here is a post command. As I said, it's a bit chatty, but um, hopefully you get the point. Um, if not, please, um, yeah raise a quest, um, follow up question or anything like that, if you want to. Thanks. If you do have any other questions um, that you would like answering, um, you can um, send them into webinar at sourcelabs.com uh, and um, they'll be passed on to you, men. Right. I got all the links to our documentation for you to read on. Um, here is um, my, one of my last slides, as you can see here, and also as a small um, overview it was a small thing I talked about today because the Source Labs products include well, various other things I did not touch on today because of time. So have a look in our documentation, have a look on our website and you will find a lot more interesting things. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, if there is uh, um, any follow up questions, just um, ping them to um, the webinar at sourcelabs.com. But uh, again, uh, thank you so much for joining. We hope you have a good day. Thanks, everyone.